So not long ago, I built a little fire pit in my front yard and tried reduction firing a pot. And it didn't come out so good. In fact, it was a complete disaster. As you can see, it's all dark and covered with carbon spots. So uh, there were several things that I think went wrong. Today I'm out here in the country to try to rectify that problem. Hopefully I can fix it and we can make some progress here. Uh, so also, I have a bowl out here. So the jar is a refire. The bowl has never been fired. I just finished painting this yesterday. So I've got two different firings I want to do. Uh, one for the pot that I'm going to do in a hole in the ground and one for the bowl that I'm going to do on the surface. So hopefully we can make some progress in understanding how reduction firing was done back in the day. Members Black on White and Cibola Whiteware are considered by many to be some of the finest pottery ever made in the prehistoric Southwest. Both made with reduced iron paint. And yet, nobody is really sure how those ancient potters fired the pottery in a reduction atmosphere. The reason is nobody has ever found a kiln or a firing structure or a firing pit or anything in the regions where those types of pottery are made. Now up in the Four Corners region of the Southwest, they find trench kilns, these slab lined pits where they were fired and people have pretty much figured out how to fire those. Down in the Cibola and Members regions further south, no such firing structures have ever been located by archaeologists, and so we're left sort of guessing how that pottery was made. I got a hold of the notes from an old pottery replicator not long ago, which talked about how he reduction fired Cibola whiteware in a pit and then smothered the fire with a sandstone slab. So I tried to replicate that in my yard using a piece of cement board, and the results, as you saw, were not so great. So I think that cement board might have leaked oxygen because I didn't reduce it all. So I'm out here in the country trying to use what probably the Cibola potters had around most abundantly, and that is dirt. I'm gonna try smothering mine with dirt today. But I'm still following the instructions that that old replicator left. I'm firing it in a pit with a lot of charcoal around the pot and not many cover sherds because that's what he said. And I think from my past experiments with reduction firing, I found that the proximity of those coals, of those hot coals, is very important. So if you look at this sheep effigy pot that I made last year, it turned out really good, but the places that turned red, if you go back and look at when I smothered it with that sagger, the places that are red are those places where the coals were not in contact with the pot. So I think the coals in contact with the pot is part of the equation. And so today I'm gonna to try that. Not only on the pot, which is in the ground, but also with the bowl on the surface. I'm gonna make sure that when I put that bowl down on the ground to smother the inside, that there are coals under there with it. And that hopefully will eat up any remaining oxygen in there and leave me with a reduction atmosphere. Careful preheating of the pottery is critical to eliminate most breakage in an outdoor pottery firing, especially for the bottoms of bowls. If you saw my most recent pottery firing video, you saw how not preheating the bottoms of bowls can be catastrophic. Here you can see one of the big differences between a pit fire and a surface fire. In the surface fire, the coals start the fire up all by itself. You don't really have to work getting that secondary fire started. In a pit fire, there's sometimes a gap between those hot coals at the bottom and the fuel in the secondary fire. So you have to work harder at it. Now I'm ready to start smothering this bowl on the surface. And so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of lifting the bowl up, pulling those rocks out that it was sitting on. And I'm gonna put that bowl right down on the surface of those coals and then pour some dirt around it. That way we can keep oxygen out in the later stages as it cools.
Okay, so here's where I'm at. First of all, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'm making it up as I go because, as I mentioned, nobody knows how this pottery was fired exactly. Uh, so we'll see. You know, as I was putting the dirt on, uh, I could hear like little explosions going off in there, like little um, puffs of smoke or something, you know, something was going on uh, uh, sound wise as the dirt was being heaped on top. I don't know what that was. Could that silt have been like sliding down in there and, and hitting the pot and maybe uh, going off as it hit the hot pot? I don't know. Uh, I really don't want that soil sliding in there. What I was hoping was that the coals would kind of make a barrier and then the soil would sit on top of that. It may just be a problem of the type of soil we have here and the dryness of it. But, um, it is what it is at this point. Also, uh, when it was very late in the firing, I could look in and see the pot. I could see that we'd cleaned all the carbon off of it, uh, but those, that red paint didn't look very reduced. It looked a little on the red side to me. So usually I feel like a more vigorous fire from the beginning uh, really reduces those paints more efficiently. So uh, we will see when we open it up. Now it's around 11 o'clock in the morning and I've got to wait at least a few hours for these to cool before I open them. Otherwise, they could re-oxidize as I allow oxygen in. So I think I'm just going to take a break, read a book, uh, maybe go get some lunch. I hate leaving the pots, but I don't think anything's going to happen to them. I haven't seen any cows or anything in the area, so uh, they should be okay. It just makes me nervous to leave them here under the ground. Um, and then I'll come back in a little while and open them up, and we'll see what we have. That's how I learn, right? I just have to keep trying new things and taking good notes and making adjustments and trying again. And so uh, this is, you know, I don't know, my fifth, sixth, seventh uh, attempt at reduced iron. And I think I'm getting closer. We'll see. While I was waiting for the pots to cool, I collected some yucca leaves. I use these to make paint brushes and I'm planning a future video, which is gonna be a deep dive on yucca brushes and yucca brush painting. So look for that in the future. Plus, I also sell yucca leaves on my website for people that don't live in the Southwest who want to try making their own brushes. All right, it's almost two o'clock. The pottery's been buried for almost three hours and I'm ready to dig it out, take it home, see how it turned out. So here's the big moment of truth. If it doesn't turn out, you know, I can always come back and refire it. That's the nice thing about mineral paint. You can refire it as many times as you need to to get it right. But hopefully I'll learn something with this firing today that I can go forward with. So let's see what we got. Okay, let me talk a little bit about how I did. This is relatively clean. Still, I think it's a little gray and it could have been smothered a little later to get the whites a little cleaner. The lack of reduction in here, or you know, in places at least, tells me uh, maybe I didn't get a good seal. Maybe I should have got it down in the ground a little more, just got pushed it down in there. I'm, I'm not really sure about the smothering on these bowls. The whole smothering the bowls on the surface is still a work in progress, an experiment. I do have to think that maybe we were leaking oxygen or I didn't get enough coals under there. Just don't know. Now the jar, uh, this is this is in fact permanent gray. So uh, the notes I got from the old replicator said, smother it too early, get black on gray. Smother it at the right time, get black on white. So it's better than it was before in that we got good reduction and it's cleaner than it was going in. You know, it, that was completely covered in carbon but uh, still have a long way to go towards white. I think I need to learn to wait, let it sit there and just cook for a while before I smother it. I'm, I'm in too big of a hurry to smother it. So uh, I think the timing on that is really critical. Uh, letting those coals kind of burn down so there's nothing, nothing that's you know creating smoke. And, and I think maybe some of that dirt, some of that dirty dirt may have uh, seeped in and ha not helped me out much. So it's better probably if I have not so silty at dirt. This dirt is really, really fine and kind of dusty, and it'd be better if it was like chunks of dirt. It would be a little more solid, not run down in there. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just speculating. The best reduction fire I've done so far, I did at this spot about six months ago. And so that was that little canteen that I reduced. It came out almost perfect. So uh, I'll link that up right over here if you want to watch that video. In the meantime, thanks for coming with me today. I'll catch you next time.